Let's go. Hey, uh, what's going on, guys? Ninja Reviewer here, and, uh... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Alright, anyways. Hey, guys, I'm here to review, or sort of review, well, yeah, kind of, um, Dragon Ball Super Episode 4. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, uh, this episode of Dragon Ball Super... Not the most impressive episode. Well, okay, there were some pretty interesting, cool things at the beginning of the episode and at the end of the episode. So let's just get the beginning stuff out of the way, what's really interesting. We found out that Lord Beerus and Whis are on their way to Goku in about 10 minutes' time. And Beerus is like, has, though they were arguing about some kind of food that Whis kind of made for Beerus. I think it was some kind of chicken thing and he got tired of it. Even though it's weird, he says like, I haven't made that for you since over 160 years ago. And he's like, damn it, it says if I'm tired of this food, then I'm tired of this fucking chicken. And it's like, okay, fine, whatever. But just finish up your meal quick because we got 10 minutes to get the King Kai's planet. So we see, you know, him just like chowing down eating while he's running on Whis's back. Uh, meanwhile... We see Goku still doing his thing with the training. Like, I think what was really cool about that segment was that we got to see Goku do this, like, really cool command man wave. How it would just, like, it's, like, on standstill. How it's, like, a big-ass ball and shit, like, when he releases it. And then it just goes, like, all around King Kai's planet. And then when that happens, like, he has to, like, stop it. Like, it's a really big, gigantic command man wave. That shit, I will say, was actually pretty impressive, how, like, Goku pretty much just, like, stopped it while, you know, in mid-direction while it was in the air. That was pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. So there was some pretty cool stuff in this episode, but the majority of this episode was just, eh, didn't really care for it too much, because basically it focused a lot on Emperor Pilaf. Yeah, Emperor Pilaf is pretty much back, which, you know, him... The only thing in this episode now, I thought in this episode they were going to explain how Mai and Shu became little, like, actual children, because I know Mai is a little girl, and Shu became, like, a small fox puppy for some reason. I don't know why. They never explained how the hell they even became little. I don't understand that. I thought this episode was sort of explained then, but... I didn't get any explanation, so I, I'm assuming it had to do something with the Dragon Balls or something. I don't know. Again, that was never explained for some stupid reason, because I, I watched it again, and I didn't see no mentioning on how they became the way they are. So, a little explanation of that could have been nice, and just seeing them just doing some shenanigans on, you know, getting on the boat, because they found out from their Dragon Radar that... The Dragon Balls are on the ship because that's the main bingo prize that they have to win. There's other prizes too, like a trip and a castle, but the supreme grand prize is the seven Dragon Balls. And since his radar actually went off in his pocket, he found out that it's on that ship. So while they're trying to fish and they suck and they haven't gotten anything to eat in days, we see meanwhile on the boat that um, we, we see that they're there. And what happens is, is that we focus on, like, Android 18 and them. And it's kind of funny, because I've never seen Android 18 in this kind of character. I've never seen it like that. Because we all know 18 is one of those, like, kind of, like, you know, whatever, badass kind of chicks. Or just, like, this attitude sort of teenage mom sort of kind of deal. But the way she is now, though, like, i never seen her, like, this incredibly excited just to, like, win, like, a fucking grand prize and shit. So, like, because she's trying to compete, um, his husband, Krillin, and her daughter, Marin. So, they're trying to do that so they can actually get triple the chance of winning the prizes. Which, I don't know why would you want to use your own fucking little girl as your own fucking ways to win your prize, but, uh, whatever, I guess. So, so we see that, so that's actually, you know, pretty cool. I mean, that's kind of cute. I've never seen her actually do that. And, of course, Bulma and chi are both pissed because none of their husbands are there. Um, Vegeta also, we get to see what's really cool in this episode. Vegeta is training in the um, fucking thing that um, uh, Bree, Dr. Breeze built with the, the, um, the fucking um, gravity shit that he's training in. So we see him do that. Um, he's actually saying that even beyond 150 times gravity, 
is exceed over his limit. So now you can tell that he's getting actually much stronger to rival Goku. And then he gets a phone call from Boma, which I thought was actually pretty funny. Because one of the assistants got him on the phones, and then she gets really extremely mad. And I guess that's truly the terrifying power of Boma. You don't want to fucking piss her off, especially when it comes to her own birthday. So... You can tell that Vegeta, it was kind of funny too, you can tell that Vegeta was fucking sweating bullets, like, after she got, like, so incredibly mad at him, so, she, he actually interrupted his training just to go, he didn't even want to go because he's not a big party person, but because his wife demanded it, he, yeah, he kind of gave up on that pretty quickly, and that argument pretty much went down the shitter pretty much quick, so, after that happened, we see that, go, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> especially since, you know, um, since she's about, what, like, 37? I think in this time she's, like, 37 or 38, if I'm not mistaken, I think. I know in Battle of Gods it's like that, unless the age difference changed. I don't know in this. But um, at the end of the episode, we see that Goku finally learns of Beerus because King Kai was kind of being stupid and kind of told him. Because I guess he got a little flustered because Goku kept screwing up his house because of all the blowing up and shit, so he, you know, I guess because of that, he finally told him that Beerus is coming, and he said he's the ultimate god of destruction, and he is a fearsome person that you don't actually want to, like, get in his way, or, you know, pretty much just try to actually attempt to get him mad, but it turns out that it's too late, and King Kai goes into hiding, he sensed from the power that he's already there, and Beerus arrives at the very end of the episode, Seeing that, I guess he's looking for the Super Saiyan God, and that's where we leave off, pretty much, the end of the episode. The episode overall, um, I wouldn't say it's not the most interesting one, because there are, again, there are a couple things that were interesting. There was, like, again, like, with the training thing I thought was actually pretty neat, especially the animation they used for that was pretty cool. Oh yeah, speaking of the animation, I noticed that they used, like, a bunch of outlines in the animation this time around, like, they didn't, because for some reason there was, like, overlines of every, everywhere overlines, and I'm like, why are they using overlines like this, like, every single fucking shot you see is over overlines, and it's like, why are they doing this kind of style, I mean, it makes it look pretty cool, but at the same time, it's like, it's pretty, uh, especially for Toei, because Toei, you know, their, eh, limits when it comes to animation, especially nowadays, I mean, well, I mean, One Piece isn't nearly as bad as people say, but, you know, it has its moments. Anyways, um, yeah, so basically, um, so the animation, for the most part, was, uh, was actually pretty, like, again, like, the way they used the outlines, though, it was weird, but it was good. I liked the outlines because it made the animation look really, really fresh, it made it look cool, but, it, I mean, it's just kind of weird to see Toei actually try something like that, it's kind of odd, it's a new approach that Toa is actually using for, which actually, I wish they can use it more often, because it does make the animation look pretty cool. Um, the preview for the next episode looks really awesome, I cannot wait to see Goku versus Beerus, that fight is actually going to start. Now, the animation looks pretty fine at most parts from the preview, but I'm kind of scared, because I noticed that the animation doesn't look as clean, fresh, and amazing like it did in the Battle of Gods movie. Here, it doesn't look as impressive, but who knows, maybe that can change when I watch the whole episode. There are some pretty cool moments where you see, like, him doing a stance of a Command Man in Super Saiyan 3, and the transformation part looks actually pretty damn beastly, it does. But there are some moments I noticed that the animation looks pretty, eh, average, and it doesn't look like they're kind of trying in this portion. So, I don't know, that's just me, but hopefully it'll be good, maybe again, maybe the actual episode will be pretty good, and I just don't even know. And from an action standpoint, it looks like we're finally, finally getting somewhere, so I'm definitely going to keep checking it out, so, yeah. So, I mean, that again, it's just that I can't stand King Kai's voice, besides Goku's, you know, but I'm, I'm used to it by now. Even though I can't stand this Japanese voice, I'm used to... I just can't stand King Kai's voice. I think I have the worst voice actor, even though I said Goku's has that high screeching voice at certain points when the attacks and whatever. I will say the winner to the worst voice in a Japanese version is King Kai. I, oh my god. I, I can't stand his voice in the fucking Japanese version because, for one thing, his emotions suck. Like, every time there's something like he's trying to emote or that he gets angry, funny, or trying to do whatever... His emotions are always the same. Like, he's not even, like, he's, it sounds like he's not even trying to be, like, an actor. Like, his voice acting just fucking sucks. It's like, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to continue to watch it. It's just, I, 
I, I, that's the only voice I can stand. Okay, fine. Goku's whatever old lady voice, fine. Whatever. I can stand that. But King Kai's is just, it's just, it's just no. I, 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 I fucking don't like it. It just, it, it's horrible. It's like, he can't even act for shit. And this is the same voice actor from the original, original Dragon Ball Z, like, 20-something years ago. And he's, he's back. And, in my opinion, they should have just used a new voice actor. But again, Toei knows that Dragon Ball's... Then again, Toei knows that Dragon Ball Z is their bread and butter, so I'm assuming, okay, let's just use the same voice actors from... Well, like, okay, not all the voice actors. I know certain of them have either died or just retired from voice acting in general, so it's either they died or they retired. The only newest voice actors they got are for, like, Tien, Piccolo... I know Hercule got a new voice. Videl, sort of. I heard the other voice actors quit because she couldn't get used to it. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Uh, Rain Fist episode, eh, eh, I'll give it about like a 2.5 out of 5. Like, I thought it was, um, subpar at best. Uh, subpar episode, like, I would kind of say, like, I guess I was gonna give it like an okay episode rating, but, uh, I was gonna give it an okay, but I didn't really care for the whole thing on the ship and whatever. I could have given it an okay. But it's just something that I can't really stand when it comes to the Pilaf gang. I'm not a big fan of their characters here. I kind of like them more in the original Dragon Ball. And plus, in Battle of Gods, I thought they were more funnier than here. Here, they're just kind of... They're just pretty much the new generation Team Rocket. They, they suck. So, I'm not really a big fan of them. So, it's whatever. I hate to give this a bit of low of a rating, but I'm going to have to. This is pretty much the weakest episode of Dragon Ball Super. The other episodes were fine. I didn't mind the other episodes. It's just, this episode is just the weakest episode. So, I'll be generous. I mean, I'll give it, like, a, a mediocre plus episode. Like, it really just, it didn't deliver as much. And it's a really hard, and I really hate to give it such a score, but I'm gonna have to give it to there because, obviously, it just, I don't know. It just wasn't really that interesting or, again, some interesting bits here and there, like, towards the beginning some parts with Vegeta and Goku and all that and Beerus, but other than that, it's just bingo tournament, yada yada yada, whatever, the usual Chi Chi Bulma getting pissed, yeah, I get it, it's funny, don't get me wrong, but, you know, we've seen this, like, before already, so it's like, what the hell, so, just to be on the safe side, it's not really horrible, but I will give it, like, a 2.5 out of 5, I was gonna give it, like, maybe a little bit lower, like a 2, but I think a 2.5 will work, because, again, there are some pretty cool things in this episode, but other than that, it's just not that great, so, what would be a 2.5, because I know a 2, to me, would be kind of, like, not bad, not hor it's not a horrible score, um, let's see, I guess, it's, I guess it's more like a subpar, because 2, in my opinion, would be more, like, shitty, it would be, like, in the, no, it would be, like, no, no, 1, no, 2 would be, like, a bad, a bad plus to maybe, no, 2 would be, like, a bad, 2 would be, like, a bad rating, like, 1.5, whatever, biz, but 1 completely shitty, so, it's not on one of those levels, so I would give it maybe between, like, a 2 or 2.5 out of 5, um, could have been a lot better, and I know it's really hard for me to decide the score in this episode, but, eh, guess I'll be nice, I'll give it, like, a 2.5, I'll just give it, like, a subpar plus rating, pretty much, and I, hopefully the next episode is definitely a lot better, especially the promise between the fight, and, and what I like about it, at least the, the fight better be extended, that's all I gotta say, because in Battle of Gods, it was a really quick fight, I hope this time around, judging from the preview, I hope it's extended, I hope it's longer than Battle of Gods, I mean, unless we focus the whole episode on the fight, which would be pretty cool, I guess, so anyways, I'm done, that's it, I'm, I'm finished, so don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, as always, stay tuned next week for episode 5, this is the Ninja Reviewer, and it sucks that my other Dragon Ball Super reviews are gone from Anime Game Freak, so welcome to my first one on this channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys later. Anime manga fans, keep supporting what you read and what you watch. And Dragon, Dragon, Rock the Dragon, Dragon Ball Super for next week's episode, episode 5.